We're wrapping Anubis in paint to get him ready for the table. Hey everybody, I hope you're having a good day. I'm finally back with the gods from Ankh, Gods of Egypt, and we're starting off with Anubis, who's primed in skeleton bone. This thing was very intimidating to start painting, but then once you get done going, do not stop, don't look back, don't second guess yourself, just keep painting. We're starting off with some ash gray for all his skin. Uh, now, some people done them very dark, some people did them like a purple, some people did them blue. I try to stay as close as possible to the artwork. When I paint my miniatures from games, I try to stay with the artwork. So there's a lot to cover on this miniature, so of course I'm not going to show you every part of skin, but we're going to skip through it a bit. But keep watching anyways, you'll be able to see exactly what gets done here. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a mummy without using some ancient mummy, right? So we're using some ancient mummy on the wraps. So there's some up pretty much everywhere on his skin. He's got a little bit on his face, his arms, his, uh, his legs. Now, at first, I actually forgot to do uh, the, the cloth in front. So I, But I do it all at the end. You'll see I actually get it. Uh, but just be careful. If you get some on the gray, not a big deal. You can touch it up with the ash gray you know i mean you're, you're, you don't have to be a perfect painter and i definitely am not and uh but you know i could use a little bit darker color i guess or something else but this has a yellow tint to it and i find that when you put the wash on later it mixes up with the wash and still gives a highlight at the same time So here's where I'm doing that big cloth and you gotta be careful because there is like a little mummy skeleton mixed into it. So, and you want to keep him that skeleton bone for now. So try not to get it. But if you, I mean, if you touch him up, you, I mean, if you touch him, you can always touch him up with the skeleton bone, which is good. Uh, with Army Painter, they have primers and their base coat paints uh, that are 100% match. So if you make mistakes, you can touch him up. Now I have to be really honest. I'm glad I chose this color, hemp rope. It's also the uh, goblin skin color from a uh, zombie side black plague or green horde. I think green horde box set. Anyways, this is perfect for his cape. It kind of has a desert look to it. It goes on super well, cover beautiful coverage. Uh, so you gotta be careful though. Like I said, he's got this one. He has two capes as well. So he's got this cape and he's got like this rope underneath as well. And we're gonna be doing that in another color. All right, next color we're going to be using is Necromancer Cloak. This is a very dark gray, but beautiful color. It covers a lot of things. So we're going to be doing a few of these parts on his headdress. So he's got like this armor kind of thing that's like a darker color. And he's got that thing on it's the front of his nose. It's got like a little skeleton in it, but it was dark in the artwork. He's also got one on the back of his head, as you can see here. Uh, all these like trimmings in that. We're also going to do the inside cloak as well in this color. And you might have noticed that I'm going to miss a few parts on this cloak inside, but I catch them in the end. I fix them all up. I mean, the joys of having a wet palette is that your paint stays for a while. So at least if you may miss some areas, you can come back and fix that up after. Because there's so many little nooks and crannies on this guy, especially behind his, whatever you call this sword, his weapon or whatever this is. Uh, you're going to miss some spots, but don't worry about that. Just touch it up. Alright, now for this little trinket or lantern or something, we're using some dry rust. Now this is an effects paint normally, and yes, you might say it all looks a bit weird, but with the skeleton bone, it actually gives it a nice little used look to this. And the box on the artwork had this orangey, rusty look to it. So again, I don't touch the mummy that's on the inside, I just try and get the box, and just be careful there are some spots that are close to the miniature. There's some royal cloak now. I just want to do a couple spots with this nice bright blue that's not metallic. So this one little symbol on him and his like little leg coverings here or whatever hip things dangling just with some royal blue, not metallic, just to have a nice, not royal blue, royal cloak. Now we're using, again, this is one of my favorite golds, Retributor Armor. This is from Citadel. It's a base paint. Uh, I just love the coverage of this. I don't know how many times I'm going to say it. It's just amazing. 
and it also has like a more earthy tone to it than uh, say gritty gold or bright gold from the iron painter those are very yellow this has more orange to it more dark and i find it works perfectly with the egyptian theme here so there's his weapons that you gotta do there's his head thing there's a lot of gold on this thing uh there's little ornaments here and there uh just try i mean take a look at the miniature take a look at the artwork and you'll probably be able to follow along with that All right, to make some of the little details really pop, we're gonna use some Banshee Brown. This is a very light brown, but it's brighter than the Skeleton Horde. Because there's some parts you might have hit with the gold too, and you're gonna to wanna to touch up, but that's kind of cool because you can make it that it looks like more of a 3D effect. So I'm gonna hit some of the edges of all these skeleton mummies he has. I'm gonna to touch some of the little claws he has that are like our bones or whatever on his, on his shoulder pads just again like i said not to make it all one uniform color you can kind of dry brush it on too which i'm going to do a bit on these top parts here uh just to, so you don't get too much paint on there inside the recesses you really want just the edges to be touched on this one uh, i'm also doing all those bones that's holding up his cape and all that again i love that cape i just love the color i love how it came out Did a little dry brush here and there just to get it done all right, now we're going to move on to some Agrax Earth Shade. This is a Citadel Shade, and this is going to bring the whole miniature together. This is going to give it all this earthy tone. It's not going to darken down too much of the mummy, uh, ancient mummy, the banshee brown, the skeleton. It's just going to highlight really nicely, and it's going to put some brown tint to it all. Like You can see, as you're already putting this on, the highlights, the recesses are just it's, it's i don't know the shades from citadel just do a great job all right now we're going to be doing a little bit of the touching ups or the little not sorry touch ups but the little finishing touches the azure magic this is going to go on a lot of his gems you go around you take a look what looks like a gem you put this on there the few parts on his chest plate there you're going to want this just to look nice and to pop you didn't want to put this metallic on before because you didn't want to dull that down you really want it to shine Right, we're going to use an Enter Metallics paint from the Iron Painters. This is Zephyr Pink. This is going to be also for a little bit more of the gems. Again, to finish off that part on his chest, chest plate. Uh, I'm going to do those eyes on that little snake that he has on his arm uh, brace. Just a little here and there. We're going to use a little bit of Golden Griffin Dry Paint just to get that sword or those weapons or those sights or whatever they're called. Just a nice edge highlight and some on his helmet too. Just look like the light is hitting a certain spots and give a little bit of brightness. All right. I'm going to actually show you what I did because I want to test out some crackle effects and some desert effects here. And maybe I shouldn't have put this underneath. Uh, anyways, you're going to see. So I'm using some Sandy Desert. This is an AK Interactive Diorama Series acrylic paste. It almost looks like peanut butter. Uh, I've used this on most of the mini on the Guardians mostly. A lot of them I've used also the other kinds of that. But then what I want to do is do a crackle effect on top of this. And you're going to see this coming up soon. But when this dries, I'm going to put a contrast paint of Agaraz Dunes. And this is going to be what it's going to look like when we start doing that. So you could just leave it right there. You could leave it with the Agaraz Dunes. You could leave it that it looks like a nice brown sand that has some highlights to it. You could also maybe dry brush uh, some like desert yellow or something very bright. Even Ancient Mummy, you could probably just dry brush over that and call it a day. Put some tufts down and there you go. But... I decided to try it. Let's see what light and dry crackle effects this. Now, I, I never opened this before. It's the first time I look at it. As you can see, it's like a liquid glue paint. Now, I've used the Citadel's technical crackle paint or whatever, the stuff that cracks. And to be honest, I don't like it. It doesn't stick well. It When it cracks, it peels off sometimes. You lose pieces. But I want to see if I could get some of the cracks. I didn't know how big the cracks would get. So I said, okay, well, if the underneath part has a de the sandy desert will it come through and all that well it actually doesn't oh it just cracks like this so i put a little bit of soft tone from the iron painter which is a wash just to get into those nooks and crannies of the cracks 
but it does make it a little bit more bumpy, rigid, having that sandy desert underneath. But anyways, there you go, folks. Anubis painted, ready for the table. If I can paint this, anyone can paint this. I mean, I am not a master painter, and I am so proud of how he turned out. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. We'll catch you all in the next one.